Hey, how about you, everybody? Welcome into another edition of uh, the Auburn Live Show, Recruiting Edition, also known as The Shriveled Pod. I'm your host, Jeffrey Lee, Senior Recruiting Editor for Auburn Live on 3. <laughs> and uh, if you're not a member of the site, you should be. If you missed our promotion, it's uh, still not too late, man. You can still get in for a week for free. A little bit better than last week. Anyway, I got a great show for you today. Great show, a lot of talk, a lot to talk about. I'm joined as I was <laughs> last week. Oh shit! Yeah. Yeah. Technically, yeah. nice intro there. Nice entrance there. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go straight. I got message board insider J Head, also known as on the streets as A Head. Just don't call him A Hole. How about you, J Head? Hey, I'm doing good, brother. How about you? I'm doing better than your iPad. How about that? I'm telling you, man, it was just some technical difficulties there, but like the Super Bowl, we will rebound. The show must go on. Cole Pinkston, how the hell on. are you, buddy? See, uh, see, uh, got your uh, glasses on today. I do, I do. I wanted to look smarter than everybody else, and I've uh, tried that myself. I think it's working so far, but we're about to start talking. Ah, so you know, it's the it's the conference call. I like it. <laughs> so, guys, last week we talked about the open slots on the coaching staff. Uh, we recorded Thursday. We're recording again today uh, is Thursday, folks, February 24th. So uh, you're probably listening to this on Friday. So keep that in mind throughout the pod. Uh, last week, we talked about the holes on the staff. Since then, we've had uh, Ike Hilliard, most recently named wide receivers coach. We've seen Eric Kesaw promoted to office of coordinator. Not that surprising. We've seen uh, Rock Bell and Tony, I guess, promoted. Right, he was on staff yep. already, promoted yep, up to was. the edge position to, to replace Burt Watts, who has joined the Denver Broncos. Jay Head, we'll go to you first, big dog. Thoughts on these moves? I thought they were really good moves, and I think they were all logical moves that made sense. I made a post about this uh, on the corner, and somebody asked me kind of my perspective on what did I think or how would I grade these hires. And the hires to me needed to make the head coach successful. And I think they accomplished that because they increased the comfort level on the staff of the head coach. He now has two coordinators with the promotion of key to offensive coordinator that are lockstep with him and his vision and his scheme and how he plans to basically lay everything out. There's no question. They complete each other's sentences. They know exactly what to do and when to do it. At the edge position, you promoted someone to also who's the special teams coordinator uh, that has a lot more experience than the previous guy that you had in place there, but they have a level, a level of expectation for what Rock's going to add. You had players on the team that stumped for him to get that position, which means right. that he already has their trust, which is very important to not only have the head coach's trust, but the players in that room's trust. And then his experience in recruiting in South Florida, which will help as far as the overall staff is concerned with where you can put people for area recruiting and kind of their familiarization is concerned. And then obviously the big fish is I kill you who's got name recognition throughout the entire Southeast. I mean, I think anybody who's been a fan of SEC football, if you said the names Ike Hilliard, Riddell Anthony, Jacquez Green, would automatically think about Florida in that 1994 to 1996 range as Spurrier in the fun and gun and knowing what a complete receiver he is. And has since then gone on to the NFL and become a technical expert in his craft. And he's coming in to shore up a position that the head coach had illuminated to having issues with as far back as the previous spring. So now you're bringing in a guy that has infinite wisdom in that position. You know he's going to be able to step into any home and be able to recruit. I guess it's TBD on, his, on how his desire to recruit, but as far as he getting, his, getting himself in the door and his name recognition, it's through the roof. Absolutely. So that was, that was a home run as far as I'm concerned, and all of these hires made sense. Cole, do you uh, view these guys, these hires, as upgrades? Dare I say upgrades? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think receiver coach, like uh, I think Hilliard's a major upgrade there. Uh, you know, I, as far as recruiting goes with him, obviously he's got the name. He's got the he, – when he walks in a room, you know who he is. You know where he was. He played or at least the parents do. Right, yeah. Yeah, and some of the players, you know, maybe they know who he is, but uh, all I got to do with them is say, look, this guy was a pro bowler. Uh, you know, he was really good for the Buccaneers. He's really good for – and then just start naming everybody he was with. Steve Spurrier, Danny Werfel, all that. So, yeah, he's going to have that. Uh, but 
in reality, I mean, he's never recruited on the college level. He's been in the NFL, you know. So I, I wonder how that's going to go just from a – I'm not going to say effort standpoint, but just from a, you know, getting after it, uh, uh, learning the landscape. I just think it might take a minute. I think it's going to take a little longer than we maybe expect. Again, you know, it's that thing. You got the you got the image. You just go and say your name and say, all right, let's 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 work together, kind of thing. Uh, but I, either way, it's a great hire. I think he's going to bring so much to the position, just from what he knows and and what he's learned, and even playing for Steve Spurrier, he, he had to learn something there, right? I mean, one well, one would think, right? Yeah, something about the passing game, maybe. Uh, so yeah, I, I like that hire. I think Rock Bell and Tony is going to be great. I, I think his effort level is perfect to go along with Jeff Schmetting because, as we've said on here a couple of times, all we hear about is the effort that Schmetting puts into recruiting and, and what he does and, and coaching. I think Bell and Tony is a perfect match with that on the defense. And then you got Zach too, Zach Etheridge. Yeah, it, defensive recruiting, I think, is about to see an uptick, at least in in uh, effort. You know, you have to land the guys, of course, but I I like the group they've put together on the defensive side. And Brumbaugh as well, who's, you know, played at Auburn, has that going for him. And nice complement of experience and youth there with Christian Robinson and Zach, and then you blend in three different guys, and Jimmy Brumbaugh, who's been a defensive line coach, I think, for 15-plus years now. Rock, who's got 18 years of experience as a special teams and or defensive coordinator. And then Jeff Schmetting himself, who's been a defensive coordinator at the FCS level and at the GP at the group of five level. And now at the FBS level. Yeah. I missed, I missed Robinson meant to add him in there too. Definitely, definitely a good hire. Had one kid already that, that got an offer recently. Tell me, man, when I picked up the phone, this guy was on fire already. Like he, the enthusiasm just made me excited about Auburn. I was like, well, there you go. You know, just from just from, from today, uh, the two two guys that I've talked to, and I'll have these updates up on the site soon. Well, one I've already had, Wilkie Denod, the edge from South Florida, asked him about Rock Bell and Tony, and here's here was his quote: he, "He's a high energy person and wants to get to know you." That's what I thought was very intriguing because a lot of the times we've heard relationships is obviously key in recruiting. Maybe that's something that Harson struggle, struggles with on the recruiting trail. But having guys that can take up that slack uh, is going to be huge for Auburn. So getting Bell and Tony in and uh, Denai went on to say, he's not like everyone else. He genuinely wants to build a relationship with you and get to know you and your family. That's important to me. And Denod has uh, – he's planning on coming up to Auburn. He was one of several – four-star edges uh we've seen guys from utah and uh clegg the clegg hunter clegg uh and then several new offers go out this week have yet to see a uh, a night hilliard offer i talked to the the junior college wide receiver malik benson from hutchinson community college i talked to him thursday and i asked him um you know, if he knew Ike Hilliard, he didn't know of him. i mean he knew of him but i hadn't talked to him yet he had talked to eric Keesaw, but he said that he saw was telling him about Ike Hilliard's resume and the 12 years in the NFL playing, the 12 years in the NFL coaching, uh, coming from the Pittsburgh Steelers, having played for Florida's fun and gun back with Steve Spurrier. And not only that, but uh, so I'll, I'll get to the second part later, but he, but that was very, very important to Malik Benson, a guy who wants to be developed, who wants to make it to the league. Um, that was, uh, that was definitely eye popping for him. I'll have more on him Friday on the site. Um, when, when we talk about recruiting, I'm trying to think what was the uh... – oh, another thing I like about Ike Hilliard that probably gets looked over, but he's from Patterson, Louisiana. So you've, yep. got, you've got more Louisiana ties, you've got Florida ties, and then, you know, I, I think Justin had wrote, and maybe you did too, Jay Head, that the connection there with, uh, with Ike Hilliard was Cadillac Williams and their, times together, uh, their time together with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, Jay had and I were working this thing last week. I think it was last Friday night, maybe. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, there was some really good names. There was a, and I think I mentioned them in the War Room Saturday. Ike Hilliard was not one of them. No, it was Adam Henry. Adam Henry. Really good. Billy Gonzalez, the there former wide receiver coach at Florida. And then Jonathan Wallace was more or less kind of, I wouldn't say a fallback, but he was somebody that was a little lower down 
uh, the tier that they were kind of evaluating. And they, they really kept this name well hid. Um, and my guess is he was probably the focal point from the outset. Right. Um, and, and, you know, you got smoke from other places. Smoke screens. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. smoke screens. But I, I thought mm -hmm. Mike Hilliard was an absolute grand slam on yeah. resume alone. Never met the guy, but just his resume alone. Anytime you hire an NFL guy, and not just a guy who's been in the NFL one or two years coaching, this guy, Hilliard, let, let me give you a rundown on him. Spent – let's see, he got his start – with the Washington Redskins. Yes. Oh, there it is, coaching career. I was sitting here looking at it all before the show. No, yeah, he, he started with the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, that's right. One year with the Redskins after that. One year with the Redskins, went, went to the Buffalo Bills, back to the Redskins for a few years, then went to the Steelers, and his contract was up after the 21 season, and Auburn <laughs> had an opening. A Cadillac, here's his buddy from the NFL – needing a guy to work with. I mean, you're talking about Cadillac at running back. You're talking about Ike Hilliard at wide receiver. We've seen a lot of new offers and a lot of momentum as far as the offensive line goes from Will Friend. And I love this Joe Bernardi cat. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Joe Bernardi, Joe for Bernardi. you guys listening, is the offensive line assistant. Him and Will Friend are tag teaming this offensive line recruiting. And from just from the outside looking in, they're killing it. Mm-hmm. They really are. And Bernardi's just kind of that shot in the arm of energy. And he bonds very well. He's younger, obviously, um, than Will Friend. And so he's making – it feels like the initial contact and really kind of handling a lot of day-to-day -day interaction um, as far as that's concerned. And Will Friend's being a complimentary recruiter and closer as far as uh, continuing on the contact that Joe Bernardi initiates. Just a really great one-two punch. And it kind of reminds me of the situation that Rodney Garner had with his right-hand man that was here for a long time that kind of assisted him with defensive line recruiting. I'm going to call him Chop. You know his actual name. No, I know him as Chop. No, <laughs> I think it's Bernard. At Laverne Harden. Laverne, Laverne, yeah, there you Harden. go, whatever. Yeah. Chop. Yeah. yeah, he was always Chop to me. Always Chop. But uh, he. this is no secret that this has been done before as far as that's concerned, as far as getting an assist from an analyst. Um, and kind of tag teaming because offensive line is a huge board, just like defensive line is a huge board. You need more than one person in that room being able to make phone calls and contact every day to make sure these guys are valued and prioritized. I mean, this is a major, major position of need for Auburn in this cycle. Um, so I, I really love the hire of Joe Bernardi and how he's complimented Will Friend in this cycle. I've just so, never seen these analysts, assistants, whatever they are, it, it, uh, be so public in their recruitments. Like I, I've never heard kids talk so much about these guys and how much they're contacting. And I will say this from a conversation I had last week with a former coach, I had lunch with a former coach, Harson, when it's ball time, he wants these coaches, man, video. I mean, I, I think it's kind of designed so that these uh, uh, position coaches are working on game plans and schemes and they're working on the team, they're working on the ball. And while they're all doing that, you've got the assistants and the analysts back here working the, the, in the background on the recruits. You've got them texting. And so it opens up a lot more time for these coaches to focus more on ball. It makes a lot of sense. Now, when you, when you talk to the recruits and you hear Bernardi's name a lot and Rock Bellantoni up until he was the uh, – promoted to the edge guy also let's don't forget that we've seen some uh, support staff hires and our ret retention actually Trevon Reed was uh, just released yes. on Wednesday that he will be recruiting I can't remember or player uh director of player and recruiting or something like that I think it's director of recruiting and player development is that it Cole? that sounds great I think it's relations player You're right player relations that's it Cole yeah and I think that's huge, and I, I'm going to have a story on a kid Friday on the site, uh, Kai Prien, who is from Louisiana, St. James High School, very close with Trevon Reed, and I think he let – me, let me tell you about Kai. He is a uh, 250 player con on three consensus, 255 actually, four-star. He's a t number 10 athlete in the class. Auburn is recruiting him at wide receiver. He's developed a good relationship with uh, Trevon Reed, and, and not just from – recruiting i mean this goes way back uh they're from about 15 miles down the road from each other Thibodeau and uh where's he from bella rose so uh he is a very good athlete a top target yes brian, and in the absence of the wide receiver coach brian harson 
has been recruiting him personally. Brian Harst and Trevon Reed mainly working this kind of preteen kid who is very, very impressive. Just a, He reminds me in high school of Trevon Reed. Remember how Trevon did, did just about everything, right? He's quarterback, Absolutely. wide receiver, kick returner, cornerback. He did it all. Yeah. Um, this kid can do it too. Uh, he came for two games last fall. He's going to come back for several, as many as he can. He really loves the environment, the family environment in Auburn. And when I do his profile, I'll probably go ahead and put in a, a – a pick for him. I really feel like Auburn's in a really good spot for Kai Prien. And I know Cole just put in another uh, – did you put in your prediction, Cole? Yeah, I did. I did. I put one in for Clay Whedon, the Clay office. Whedon. Nice. Uh, yeah, I, I'm still I'm still not 100%, but I feel like it's heading that direction sure. if Auburn decides that they really want to push for him. And, and the reason they wouldn't maybe push for him right now is because there are just so many guys on the board and they don't know exactly where interest is coming from and how much interest. So, But as of right now, it seems like he's one of the guys to really watch, and he's coming back in March. Uh, couldn't wait to get back. Said he was on pins and needles to get back after that first trip where he saw a bear on the way up yeah. and, and some deer and all that, and he's like, man, this this looks like my kind of place. Yeah, he's a Kobe Smith, Reese Dismukes kind of guy. I love. I, I, I mean, uh, after I talked to him the first time, after his first visit, was talking about that bear and stuff. I mean, we, we texted the rest of the weekend. He wanted to know I was hunting uh, hunting that weekend. He was like, "Man, did you get him? You, you know, you see any deer this weekend? Hey, yeah, yeah. you didn't get him." Um, so he's one of those country strong and nasty. Huh? I like it. I like it. R- really good kid. Love, love love talking with Clay. Which one? Uh, and Jay had you. We're, we're all qualified enough to do this, but let's throw some names out there of guys right now. That you feel good about if Auburn if signing day were next week, which it's not, it's still what 10 months away. But if signing right. day were next week, who are some guys that you feel pretty good about? Who would you say are over 50% or 50% or more? We'll say that. 50% or more. We'll, we'll start Ooh, with we'll start you. with Cole. We'll give you some time. Well, I got I got one. 50, I'll give you one right now. Okay. Um, and I'll go Ethan Nation. From okay. Atlanta, Georgia. Good Defensive pick. back. Defensive yeah. back has a long-standing relationship with Zach Etheridge. And, you know, well, when he first started coming, you know who he's best friends with? Uh, the kid that's over at Phoenix City. Um, A.J. Harris. A.J. Harris. A.J. Harris. I do not like Auburn's chances with any of those kids at Phoenix City Central. I mean, Phoenix City. Yeah. But Ethan Nation, I concur with that. I would pay, I would have him on my list. Well, and I'll tell you what. I mean, they they are putting a ton of effort into Atlanta. I mean, a ton of effort into Atlanta right now. Probably a dozen or so kids that are really high blue chip prospects that are on the board that they're working on. And it makes a lot of sense. I mean, when I crunched the numbers the other day, 57 out of 65 Power 5 teams have a player from Atlanta on their roster. 57 out of 65, that was an insane stat. And that tells you the talent level that's in that city. And it's yeah. less than 100 miles away from Auburn. This where our coaches spot. can get there anytime they want. And it just makes so much sense for us to continue to cultivate those regional ties right there in that city. And I know Jimmy Brumbaugh, Zach Etheridge, and Christian Robinson have all had some influence um, there. And, and I've been impressed with the effort they put forward. But I, I'm really interested to see a Cole's list on uh, prospects that he feels good on. Yeah. You know, by the way, I think Auburn's had a pretty good history in Atlanta or in that area, right? Sure. They have, not recently, but right. they, traditionally they've had a huge influence. So, I, yeah. Speaking of, of that, you know, with our recruiting prediction machine on on three, it takes into account how well the school has done previously in that area. So you might see some guys, you might see some guys leading with Auburn leading with the RPM right now just because they're from that area and they're getting recruited so heavily, you start getting some visits in the mix and watch out, you know, Auburn could really do. And I'm going to go with you there with the same area and go to Langston Hughes high school uh, in Fairburn, Georgia, which I think is, is that the same? Is that the Atlanta area? Sure. It is. That's, that's Atlanta. That's, I think that's East Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go Terrence love. uh, Woo. T love. Another defensive back. You know, interesting talking to Terrence. I think he's looking for somewhere that uses uh, that extra DB, that 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 nickel type player that plays close to the line of scrimmage. 
and Auburn's going to do that. I think I think even Jeff Schmetting's talked to them about that, and I think that's put them in a better spot. Um, not going to say that Derek Mason didn't do that, but he liked more of a back safety. Uh, instead of playing that nickel closer to the line, he liked him as a slot corner or a safety that dropped back a little bit. I think Love being, you know, 6'2", 6'3", 200 pounds is just – I'm going to compare him more to Smoke Monday in that sense, where he's better closer to the line, and he's you know from kind of the same area too. So there you go. Uh, okay, Aaron Love is my pick right now. I think okay. well there. I'm going to st- I'm, I'm going to stay at Langston Hughes. Yeah, <laughs> you going with Josh Horton here? I'm going with both of them, Big Dog. I like it. I'm going like with it. defensive lineman Josh Horton. And offensive line, I don't know. You probably know. You two know more than me. Is is Bo Hewley a tackle? He yeah. is a, a big one. <laughs> and, and now he's committed to Georgia, folks. He's a four star tackle. I think he's the number six offensive tackle in the 2023 class. He is still committed to Georgia. He is. And I tell you what, he was almost not. And that was uh, on the on Tuesday. Um. Now he's still committed. If Will Friend, and I know there's some buzz out there that Georgia's got the opening uh, for an offensive line coach and Will Friend's name is going to be brought up and talked about because of his relationship with Mike Bobo and, and, and the rest of the coaches over there, Kirby. Uh, if, if Will Friend stays at Auburn, Bo Hewley signs with Auburn. All right. So I'm gonna put on I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Bo Hewley on there, and then I think if you get Bo Hewley and you get Terrence Love, you're gonna get Josh Horton if you want him. Yes, and, if you want him. And you also got Jelani Thurman, a four-star tight end, sitting there from the same yeah. school. I was gonna say, and all those kids are connected. They all want to play together. Do they have a 2024 quarterback? They, they do. sure do. He's big time. Prentice, Pr- Prentice, yeah, Prentice. Um. He was at the junior day in January, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and, he was. So, so we've seen Damari Austin, the running back signee uh, from from Georgia. We've seen him tweeting about how Georgia, the Georgia takeover here at Auburn, and I think this is kind of what he's alluding to. Auburn's making some really good inroads in Georgia in the Atlanta area, and I think we're going to see a big uptick in in, in commitments coming in later this spring. I know March 19th yeah. is a date we all know we've got circled on our calendar. Uh, there are obviously going to be visits before then and visits after, but that's going to be a big day. And I'm going to keep this going. If any, do y'all have anybody else you would say, hey, 50 percent or better? Two more. 50 percent or better or in the game? I would say let's say 50 percent or better. I mean, signing days next week in this hypothetical situation. Signing days next week. I'm going to give you some more names from Atlanta that I've written down as guys that I have interest in. So let's go with Zach Owens, tackle oh. from Atlanta. Zechariah. There you go. Yeah, Zechariah. Uh, linebacker. D. Love Creighton. Talking, yeah. By the way, yeah. love talking to Zach, by the way. I had a great interview with him after the uh, one of the games this year. He was great. His Iron anyway, Bowl. I think it was the Georgia game, was it? Oh, was, was it? it? I think he was at both. I think D. you're right, Cole. D. Creighton. Linebacker D. Creighton from Atlanta, Georgia. Now – let me caution you there just a little bit because he got a Clemson offer yesterday. Okay. Well, see, I didn't see that come in, and that's going to be one of the check it up. Now, I'm with you. I think Auburn's made a great move on him, and I still think they're probably sitting really close to the driver's seat. But that Clemson offer, you know, they don't offer many guys. So I, that always perks my ears up. You know, when, when Clemson offers somebody, I think they're going to hear him out. So hey, it's just kind of where I'm looking at right now. And two guys I wouldn't predict, but I want to find out more on right now is linebacker Raul Aguirre. I think that's how you say his name. Yes, or that's exactly how you're supposed to pronounce it. <laughs> and you sound like me, Jay. <laughs> I'm telling you, brother, that was brutal. Uh, and then, I don't even know how to write it down. Like, what's the first letter? I've been Listen, saying, I've been saying it's awful. Uh, that's is, that, is that how you say it, Cole? That's how I've said it. I'm probably wrong, though. Hey, listen, you'll talk to the kid before I do, so apologize to him for me, please. Yeah, that, that, that guy. I have the glasses. Are, are you pronouncing – R-A-U-L? R-A-U-L-A-G-U-I-R-R-E. A-G-U-R-R-I-E. Yeah, you said it. That was perfect, man. Well played. Oh, uh, yeah, that was some South Alabama pronunciation yeah. right there. <laughs> and then Kyan Lee, who just decommitted from yeah. Georgia. yeah. 
that's oh, yeah. what I'm going to watch majorly that I know that Zach's trying to make a move on. So yeah. where's he from? <sighs> Shit. I, when I saw that, Cole, I think you said, hey, this is Cedar Grove, I think. Yeah, maybe Cedar, so. That I think sounds Cedar right. Grove. That sounds yes. right. Now, and you got to think, what's an in-state kid like that to be decommitting from Georgia so early? And well, it is I, interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's worth noting, and I think Jay has right. Let's write that name down and don't forget him. Let's plug that away for later. See where see when he comes to Auburn. I mean, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and get in touch with him. I want to see where he stands with Auburn. Uh, I know Zach. Man, Zach's been killing it over in Atlanta. Just just getting Auburn's name. I'm not. There's no commitments. Braden Joiner is the only commitment thus far. But being it like, I mean, listen to all these names we're throwing out, and I'm not done. And and no. Jay, had, Jay had, by the way, on that on Zachariah Owens, uh, Auburn offered his teammate today, DJ yes. Chester, another yeah. offensive lineman, another good offensive lineman from the Atlanta area. And and, yeah. and and I mean, it's just it's amazing the amount of talent that's within a you know 300 mile radius of Auburn, um, and Atlanta yep. being just the the, the metro you know, complex area that you can go get it all. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's a little bit of everything there in Atlanta. It's yeah. why it's so important. Um, and it's why having a guy like Damari Austin, who's majorly connected in Atlanta and very popular with a lot of kids, that was such an important move for last class because that's the kind of play that can bleed over into following classes. Yeah. I'll go uh, – my turn? Yeah, yeah, your turn. Okay, put Kai Preen on the list. I don't know if we started this segment with Kai Priam, but he's definitely a guy. Yeah, I you, think I actually put in a, a recruiting prediction for Kai, or if I haven't already, I will. And um, I'm going to stick with the uh, new offer today. And I don't I, know much about it, dude. I, I don't know much mine. about him. You're taking one of mine right now. The Bryce Thornton. Whoa, yes. yeah. Yeah. Bryce Thornton, another Atlanta area guy that was Damari – did Damari retweet him? You know, there was some. There was something that made me go, he "Oh, that it. might be worth looking into." Other than just an offer, like there's there's something going on here. Oh, so, I know what it was. It was the recruiting prediction machine it had Auburn at like fifty percent, fifty. There you go. And I was like, there "What the go. hell?" Like that's what happened. I, I opened his profile and it was like Auburn twenty three percent. I clicked offer and it came back up. And it was like fifty something. I was like, "Damn, this might be something worth keeping an eye on." <laughs> uh. But so so we're we're talking a lot of Atlanta def, defensive backs. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get mine out of the way. I've only got two more, and these are 50 50 guys. Dakari gotcha. Dakari Nelson, safety yes. from Selma. Yep, I, big I target. talked to him last Wednesday night. Um, have an uh, update on him on Friday, maybe Thursday night. Mm-hmm. I don't know yet. Hey, but um, man, he he, he sounded really good. Sounded very, yeah, I think very... he's 50 50 with us in Clemson. I really think those are the two teams that are going to be in contention for him, or that's the word that I've been getting. And and, and another in state DB, Sylvester Smith from Mumford. Uh, I talked to his mom. I want to talk to Sylvester this weekend, kind of get a grip. I, I think I liked Auburn's chances a little more earlier, um, but I just need to know what's kind of going on with him. I haven't talked to him in a while. Is he coming up? Is he still interested? Is Auburn still coming after him hard? But I would put those two in state DBs on the at least 50 50 list right now okay i I would agree with that yeah cole you go ahead and then i'll come i got got one it just popped in my head well i had two more uh but jeffrey stole one of them that was bryce thornton (laughs) who got off today i am the host of steel yeah you 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 are you can steal do you have one more i do i have one more Running back from Montgomery, Alabama, Jeremiah Cobb. Like it. Big one. And right now, I don't think he's in a, in a big hurry, but I look at who else is in contention, and, and I know how he feels about Auburn just from visiting and talking to him. I really do think that if Auburn pushes, and from what I understand, they are, they have they have ramped it up a little bit with him because I really do think they want two backs, and, and having him as one of those backs would be good. Uh, I, I don't see anybody really challenging Auburn. I think Auburn could probably be the winner there. In the That's end. a guy, in my opinion, you've got to get. If you really want that kid, you've got to get him. There's no yeah. excuses for that. Yes. Running game, he loves the running game. He loves the he loves Tank. He loves Cadillac. Um, I know they uh, offered that other kid in Mississippi. I don't know yep. how legit that offer is. Yeah. But, hey, I, I like it, man. Let them think. Let anybody think they have an Auburn offer. Shit. Don't, don't call the bluff until he calls the commit. Yeah, um, 
but I, I love the Jeremiah Cobb kid. I think that's a guy you've got to get. If you want, if you need two running backs, you've got to get that kid. Um, and there, there's probably some more in-state kids that I could get into. Jay head, you go ahead and finish off your list. So I've got in that vein in state, uh, we'll go offensive tackle Stanton Rammel. There you go. I think, there you I go. Think he's, I think he's a 50% guy. Absolutely. Um, uh, really love his upside. I think Will Friend does too. And I think him and Whedon have hit it off to the best of my understanding. I think mm. that they connected. So hopefully it would be really nice to get both of those guys and then one or two of the Atlanta area kids that you're recruiting. I mean, this is, a, you're wanting what five to six guys from high school ranks this class. And it would be fantastic to go ahead and get one or two of those in the fold to complement what you already have to yeah. recruit some other guys. Peer Can't recruiting remember. is, it, it, yeah. Getting getting anyone from Thompson from for for Auburn, yes, it's going to be big. Stanton Rammel's father played at Bama. His grandfather played quarterback at Auburn. He is originally from Binghamton, Binghamton, New York. But they moved down here for him to play, if I'm not mistaken. But I've had a couple of good conversations with him. Sounds like Auburn's pushing harder than Alabama is. Much. I, I don't. As a matter of fact, I don't think Alabama has offered him. And those are the dudes you go get. Yeah. Yes. Go yeah. get him. And get just in that, that school, man. Get in that just, school. Just because Alabama hadn't offered him, that I mean, that doesn't matter. He's a good tackle. Shit, I don't care. Yeah he's, yeah. he's a good offensive tackle. He can turn into something really good one day. He's a good offensive tackle with bloodlines, and he's at Thompson High School, <laughs> the most the powerhouse of the state right now. Right. And he, he, not, he, not having an early offer from Alabama is not indicative of his talent level. Eston no. Harris didn't have an offer from Alabama this time last year, and he went up to their camp and was an absolute all-star, and they offered him shortly thereafter. That's right. So sometimes you just want to see these kids on the hoof, and they get offers come after spring when they can be evaluated further. I mean, I think that kid can really play, and I think, he's, I think his stock is on the rise as far as that's concerned. Other can, in-state guys worth noting? Go ahead, Cole. Let me cut you off. Buddy. I can give you three guys who I think – Auburn's got a little work to do with them, but has a real shot. Okay. And and there two of them are in state, and probably two guys you were going to name. Actually, now all three of them are edge players. <laughs> so okay, edge is such a big position. You, you they might get three, three to four guys at that edge linebacker spot. Uh, Yonze Pierre from there you follow. Go. That's a guy that I've talked to a little bit. He's got Auburn in his top group, been to Auburn three, four, maybe five times. Uh, I, I think if Alabama pushes, they might be tough to beat, and I think they're right there getting ready to. But that's a guy that you could really – I could really see Auburn having a shot with down the road. Uh, another one is Montgomery Edge from Carver High School, Quay Rusaw. There you go. Yeah who just got his fifth star today from on three. Uh, I just – I get a good feel from him, just like you you said with Dakari Nelson. Whenever I talk to him, it just feels like he, he really has an affinity to Auburn, uh, whether it's the coaching staff or whatever, I'm not sure. But it just seems like there's going to be a shot there. Uh, I don't know so much about James Smith, the, yeah. the five-star from Carver, his teammate. I'm not really feeling that one as much. But Quay Russo, I really do believe there's a chance there. And then the third one's kind of surprising. It's another edge guy, and it's a recent offer is Shandavian Bradley from Missouri, who is also a really good basketball player. I think he's really close to being a five-star with on three. Uh, Coach, here's here's an interesting deal here. Before Coach Bellantoni, Coach Rock, was announced as the edge, edge coach, uh, this offer went out, right, a couple of days before that. I, I, I talked to Shandavian Bradley. He goes, yeah. Uh, Coach Rock was on the phone, man. He was, uh, you know, it was a great, great offer. I was like, Coach Rock? I had to think for a minute, Coach Rock? Who's Coach Rock? And then I go, oh, Coach Rock Bellantoni, the defensive analyst. I was like, hmm, wonder why he's calling people. <laughs> and then, bam, he's the edge coach, like two days later. So, uh, said he told, he told me that Auburn was somewhere he always wanted to attend. That's somewhere that always stood out to him. And uh, got the offer, and now I think things are moving pretty good for him. I think he's going to visit sometime soon, and and uh, I think Auburn probably probably will have a shot at some point. And again, those last three, not saying that Auburn will get them or that they're trending for them, but they they're going to recruit them. They're going to have a shot down the road. Lot and what? 
Go ahead. Well, well, I was going to say, you know, you've got Kelby Collins, you've got Hunter Osborne. This class is freaking loaded. This state Hunter is Osborne. loaded. Yeah, yeah it, I was going to say Hunter Osborne is one that I that I'm keeping tabs on, but I think we got a legitimate shot at. I, I would put, I'm I'm close to saying fifty percent on him. Yeah, um, I wouldn't argue that. Kelby no. Collins, my hopes are not so high there. Yeah. I feel like he's trending heavily to Alabama as far yeah. as that's concerned. And one other that I'm trying to get some more info on that's a little closer to my hometown is Keldrick Falk from Highland Home. Ooh, yeah, there you go. I definitely put him on the list. That's a wild right. card. <laughs> that's definitely a wild card there. Yeah, it is. It, and my understanding is, is Alabama's heavily in the mix. Florida State's heavily in the mix, as are we. Um, and then just kind of kind of see where Rock goes with that recruitment and how much more we can get into it. I know he visited Auburn a lot in the fall. I mean, I yeah. feel like he was almost there for every home game. Yeah, he was. But things have changed. The, the landscape's changed a little bit since then. So kind of need to follow back up and see where we stand. Yeah, that, um, it's, it's unfortunate that Auburn lost Nick Eason only because Eason had made these relationships with his stud 2023 class. And so now you're starting really, yeah. over with Brumbaugh and, and Bell and Tony. Um, but you've got a lot of time, and, it, uh, and there's a lot of recruits in this state and in Georgia alone. There's enough edge players and defensive line in these two states that you can fill up your class. Alabama can fill up their class. Georgia can fill up their class. And Auburn can fill up their class, even if they were the leftovers, and they're still going to be a stud freaking class. I agree. That's and how many studs there are in these two states this year. And it's not so much beating Alabama and Georgia this year, but it's keeping the Clemsons and the Tennessees. Florida State. The Florida States. It's beating those teams right now for those other, you know what I mean, high-level blue-chip players that you need to land to be competitive with the Alabamas and the Georgias and the Ohio States. you got to start locking down those kids in our state and over in Atlanta and throughout, the, you know, throughout Georgia and into South Florida. Getting some of those kids, that's what we have to do in this cycle. Yep. I truly think once once you get a domino to fall over there in Georgia, I just really think that that could help. Oh, uh, Troy Ford. Yeah. Troy Ford's another, yeah. Troy Ford, the yeah, was, linebacker that I wrote about Thursday. I saw your piece today, Cole. They said that we're recruiting him at inside linebacker, which is – that would, that caught me a little off guard because predominantly his high oh, school that was mine. has yeah. him on the edge. Yeah, that was mine because I was – I asked because on, on three has him listed as edge. And he was talking to Schmetting all this time. And he I said, well, what position are they recruiting you to play? And he said, inside linebacker. And I said, okay, that's why Schmetting's calling you. Um, how, how tall? He was 6'2". He's down to 227. So, he's 6'2". Big-ass Mike linebacker. I mean, is what it sounds yes, like. It old is. school. 6'2". At them, junior in high school. And, and, and listen, that's down from 236. Yeah. No, so he's big. You, big kid. you keep his weight in, t- in – <clears throat> at that range, man, he is SEC ready physically, at least. Uh, but definitely is Troy Ford. Now, just to recap, what we've named off now those in-state kids, we were kind of going back and forth. Keldrick Falk, I wouldn't put, you know, uh, but but the other guys that we've named, all our picks was almost 16, 17. I think it was cracking 20 with Tree, Troy Ford. <clears throat> 20 guys get half of them. Yes. Get half of them, get 10 of them. That is a solid foundation. I, and I'm not talking about Gus Malls on solid. That's a damn solid, son. <laughs> That's a damn solid foundation for a class. I couldn't disagree. And you probably want to get to about that number before the season starts. Yeah. Okay, because you don't exactly know. I mean, I think we're all, we're all hoping best case scenario here that Auburn goes out and we play a competitive ball game uh, with everybody that we're, that we're up against, that you have a winning record this year, and that that recruiting success will kind of translate over. But you really need that foundation and those peer recruiters to help assist you. As we saw that that really kind of helped and propelled this class the last time. You need that same foundation. So I know that they're going to be grinding out with evaluations come March and April when they kind of get to get back on the trail again. Mm-hmm. They kind of see some of these kids in spring ball. They're going to have summer camps come up. They're going to have various summer events. I'm sure they're going to host, uh, hopefully, uh, Big Cat Weekend again this year. So we'll kind of see – what recruiting success we can have. I want, to, I want to go back to this point real quick uh, about the players that have chosen not to enter the transfer, transfer portal uh, at Auburn. It, it seems as though everyone that Harson's brought into this point has, has been very, very loyal. Um, 
you know, some a lot of the guys that left were guys that were recruited beforehand, and that's understandable. But I, there's only been one guy, to my knowledge, that's left that Harson brought in since he's been the head coach, and that was Drayshon Miller, who, you know, who knows what happened there, but it just didn't didn't work out. Flopped. So he never uh, saw the field hardly. No, I don't think. No, he, I, I, think, I think he got some mop up duty, you know, in one or two games max. You What's know, Drake just never like all conference player from West Virginia. Yeah, yeah, he was second team All Big Twelve, I believe. Yeah, um, just never. Unfortunately, his role never materialized. I know he got a little bit injured, and then I think there was a COVID bug that was mixed in there, um, and just never really got into the rotation. Uh, got passed over by Ro Torrance, and just couldn't crack that too deep. Yeah, so that that's the only guy I can think of of what twenty to thirty, maybe more than that. Guys that Harson brought in to this point, uh, it, counting the signees who are there now and and, and some still to come. You know, uh, I, I I think that's important because everybody wants a top fifteen, top ten class. But what good is that if half of them are gone later? You know, I I just think some of the selectivity could have been dialed back some because I think it hurt them at times of this past year. But yes. at the same time, the selectivity is giving you loyal guys. You know, you're not going to get somebody that's going, well, if it doesn't work out here the first year, I'm out. You know, I don't think these guys that they're bringing in are thinking that. I think they really believe in the program and are bought in and all that. It's just my observation of it. Man, but My observation is people are either out, they're done, right? This is not their kind of ship. They want off, dude. Yeah, or, or or these uh, they're full on, dude. This is why. Yeah. This is what I want. I want harsh, and I want somebody to run my ass, develop my ass, so I can get on with my life in the NFL. That's what yeah. I want. That's yeah. what I'm hearing from a lot of these recruits too. I believe in Coach Harson. I believe in what he's doing at Auburn. Um, and if they don't, you don't have a chance. Harson doesn't want you because he's going to come in. You're going to do this for a semester or two, and you're done, son. So, I. I I understand now how he's being selective in some of these guys. Yeah. Yeah, I can sign you. I could recruit you. But if I do sign you, you're going to transfer after a year because you can't handle it. Well, yeah. and in this day and age of the transfer portal, you have to – character and certain intangibles have to be a part of the recruiting process. You can't take any kids on skill set alone in this day and time. And I heard, you know, basically the godfather of recruiting, Nick Saban, say that himself. Yep. That, that is as big a part of the evaluation right now, your character and intangibles, as it is your actual athletic skill set. Because there's just so much that can happen. NIL is a factor now. Uh, the transfer portal is a major factor. People being pulled in different directions. So you need kids that are sold and bought into your program 100% and understand how you're going to coach them. Because that's another thing. There are a lot of coaches, and Rodney Garner's one of them, Look, he worked his dark arts for a lot of years and was, you know, Uncle Rodney when he was in the house. And then when you got on the football field, that was a different story, man. I mean, there were guys, listen, if they had the transfer portal when he oh, first man. got to Auburn, he'd have cleaned that entire defensive line room out. You know, I think Connors Miller was one of the first to hit the transfer portal, like, ever. Oh, yeah. Like, when that became an option, he said, deuces, I'm out, man. I'm done, son. He is out. Connors, I love Connors now, and I'm pulling for him. I hope he does really well at Jackson State. But and he, that he, he was the type of, he is exactly what we're describing here. Unbelievable talent, fantastic football player, but man, his work ethic was not on par with what it needed to be. And you didn't, and he had a fairly productive season at Jackson State, I think. Yeah, yeah. Somewhat. But that was the difference. Listen, when, when I covered the, both him and. Uh, Shit, what's 55's name? T.D. Moultrie. T.D., man. I was told from the – listen, they, these two guys, Connus Miller is so much more athletic and talented, but T.D. Moultrie is your workhorse who's going to bust his ass every day and want to be the best he can be. If if, if T.D. had Connus' skills and natural talents, he would have been – First round draft pick. I mean that that was the that was the difference between those two teammates in high school was, Connors had all the talent. TD had all the work ethic, um, and we saw TD come in have an awesome end of, end of his career. Speaking of transfer portal, we need to mention Auburn has offered two yes. Georgia Tech defensive linemen, 
Mike Lockhart, who's more of an inside guy, tackle, nose guard, actually, really, right? Three tech. Yeah. Okay, three tech. Okay, I, I, I called the three tech the tackle. Um, and then his edge teammate, Jordan Dominic. 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 <laughs> uh, He's a player. He's a player. Yeah, for no, Dominic can play now. Yeah. He can. Yeah, he can definitely he, play. He has Both the of stats. Them out of this. Yeah. Both of them out of our normal recruiting footprint, one from Florida, one actually from Bessemer, Alabama, if I remember correctly. Mike's from Bessemer, yes. Huffman, Huffman. Huffman High yeah, School. From Huffman High School. And he was more of a project, more of a basketball player in high school, to the yeah. best of my understanding. Really great-looking kid on the hoof. Um, just needed to be developed. Yes. So we'll see, you know, if he actually does commit to Auburn, what Jimmy Brumbaugh can kind of get out of him. And it wouldn't be the first project that Jimmy Brumbaugh has taken and elevated their game. I mean, you know, he yeah. took a certain player – they transferred from Auburn to Maryland and turned him into an NFL football player. Who was yeah. Byron Coward. Yes, sir. Shut up. Yes, sir. That's another one that didn't gel with Rodney. No, but he, <laughs> another one that didn't gel with Rodney. Absolutely. Man, that's, he took, him and Connors yeah. were torn in the same cloth, weren't they? I'm yeah. telling you, but – they, you know, Jimmy Brumbaugh is underrated. I mean, he was he tutored under Pete Jenkins, who is basically yeah. the gold standard defensive tackle coaches. I mean, and he raves about what Brumbaugh's potential is as a defensive line coach. This kid would be a project, but you got to love the tools and intangibles that you see from him, the size, the strength, the quickness. It's can he put it all together on the field and can that light come on? And obviously his teammate on the edge has been much more productive to this point and really could be that third edge for us that we need. I mean, we rotated a ton of edge guys last year. I mean, you definitely – you rotated TD. At least uh, – yeah, yeah, at least, at least three. Leota. Derek and, I Hall. mean, there were times – Derek Hall, and then Hype got on the field as well. Yeah, he did. Right. I mean, you rotated four different guys through last year. You need some depth there, and you really don't have it beyond your starting two. Yeah, and, you know, I'll, I'll give you a reason for optimism for getting somebody that – it's a little raw, and and even though they're in college, they're still a little raw. But uh, Marcus Harris and and Eculiota, you look at them on film, and you, you don't you, you're not just wild if you look at their Kansas. You know Marcus Harris from Kansas, uh, Eculiota from Northwestern. You're not just like, man, you you got to go get that guy. I mean, he's unbelievable. They were okay. I mean, right? They made plays here and there. Uh, they weren't getting blown off the ball or anything. They held their ground well and 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 made a few plays here and there, but. But they really figured some things out at Auburn, and sometimes you just you need that you need that step in the right direction. A different program, different weight room. Uh, you know, you're playing against better competition every day. It just makes a difference for some guys, and you got you got to trust your coaching staff to go and see see the guys that have that potential. And and I think this coaching staff has an eye for that. And they, they all, I mean, nobody was rolling tumors when those two kids. No, those two guys. No. Uh, Sign with Auburn and man, what and Tony Fair, too. I mean, he, he wasn't as influential as those two guys were, but man, he played and he made a big impact for Auburn. I thought Auburn's transfer uh defensive lines last year were phenomenal yeah. considering. And uh, I defensive line is going to be a high priority for Auburn for the rest of the spring and transfer portal wise. We're looking at three positions right now we're looking at the D line, we're looking at the O line, we're looking at the wide receiver. Yeah, uh, I mean that's what Auburn's going to prioritize for this transfer portal. So anytime you see a good guy hit, hit the portal, especially with ties in the southeast, Auburn's probably going to be reaching out. I think UCF has reached out to Jordan Dominic, uh, yep. I, I, and and he mentioned I talked to him a little bit, and he mentioned that getting back closer to home. Hey, listen, that that's that's the trend right now, right? These guys are transferring out and they're going back home. Um, yeah. So that's when I think Auburn's got a really good shot with Mike Hawk, Lockhart and probably an outside shot with Dominic only because he mentioned that to me. And he, when he said it, I was, he, he, I kind of, you know, it was like, you know, obviously that's kind of close to home and I kind of want to get back there. Yeah. So that's, that's just something to consider when you're reading the room right there, Jeff. Yeah. Right. 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 Um, all right, folks, let's see. Uh, we got any, how about you this week? Yes. Oh, really? I do. I got one. Wow, that was a very uh, climactic pause there. <laughs> well, I thought you would have them first. You know, you're the host. Oh, man, I'm going to clean it up. <laughs> what you got, CP? Give me Danny Archer. Danny. Whoa. Just, uh, <laughs> you will not be liked, Cole. Well, 
I don't think people like Swamp Eagle either. That was my guy last oh, week. Oh, for real? Yeah, this week. I like it. I like that. I like Swamp Eagle. Me I'm with too. You. And I don't dislike Danny Archie at all. It just, you know, Dan, no, Danny's a little confrontational on the board. That's yeah. cool. I mean, Kess, Kess is a great poster. She is. <laughs> hey, uh, if y'all aren't members of Auburn Live on three, you will get that. <laughs> How about you at Danny Archer? My my reason for Danny, man, he's I when I started a Twitter page to do what I'm doing now, I think he was one of my first 10 followers. Right dude, on, dude. Been there since day one. He's still with us. Love that guy. Say whatever you want, Danny. You, you got it, man. You got the floor. I hear you. Hey, you, Danny you, Archer. you pay your $10.99 a month. I like it. <laughs> a year. That's right. That's right. <laughs> there you go. He got it on the ground floor, son. Hey, hey yes, I'll, sir. I'll pay one of your subscriptions, but don't wait till the 50% is over. Hey. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Uh, uh, you got any more, Cole? That's it. All right, Jay head anybody? No, I, I'm out Good this week. I'll make sure I got some how batches next week. Uh, I don't have many. Uh, I've got uh, Jayville AU Tiger, big fan of the show. Man, listen, anytime when I post the podcast on Friday mornings, or what, hopefully this is going to be a regular thing now, record on thursday afternoons post on friday morning uh jville au tiger is w- one of the uh the first to respond and, and show the support of the show au accountant 55 is as well very good and uh chattanooga tiger oh and this is why so after the show last week or he posted in the thread he said cole pinkston looks like a bit like uh brian mccann's long lost brother and i thought holy shit he does hey look man i i've been called I've been called Kevin James in my lifetime. Kevin James. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the lead singer of Rascal Flats. I will take that. I will oh, take yeah. McCann. Will, you know who he's married to? Who? Tiffany Fallon. Yeah, Listen, all you, all you OG Rivals subscribers, back in the day when I first started with Rivals, early 2000s, mid-2000s, Tiffany Fallon was, I think she was a Playboy uh, cover girl whatever you call it i mean i trust me i've been my playboys <laughs> but she was also the host of rivals amp so like rivals used to have videos of her standing with her little brick wall behind her and, and talking about recruits with the little it was tiffany fallon who yeah. later in nashville oh. married rascal flats oh. so, so how about you tiffany fallon Okay, 20 years forward, now you got jay head with the brick wall behind it yeah right if we're mm. all three we, we downgraded just a little bit here jeff <laughs> I just uh, but I, I just wanted to know if uh, Tiffany Gary, Fallon, uh, uh, are you happy? Gary Lavox is his name, in case you're wondering. Lead singer. Uh, I don't sound right. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's the same dude, but she did marry somebody like that. Rascal Flats, I believe. Tiffany I've Fallon, look her up. Look her up one night when your wife's gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's see. Uh, great show, fellas. Let's do it again next Thursday. We'll put it out on Friday for the. With all the, the subscribers and listeners, man, we really appreciate everybody. Again, if you're not a member of Auburn Live on three, you should be. Right now, we got a free week, man. You sign up, get a free week. If you don't like it, take off. But uh, we do not think that will be the case. For J Head, also known as A Head, don't call him a hole. And Cole Pinkston, I'm Jeffrey Lee, stay out of the left lane. Do know. the right thing. <laughs> yeah. Stay out of the left lane and do the right thing. All (laughs) right. See y'all next week. See ya.